Hi, um, in this uh, lecture I want to talk about organometallic reactions and we're just expanding a little bit on what we already know as our Grignard type uh, reactions. So we could take a Grignard reagent, remember when I talk about organometallic at this stage, um, I mean this can be typified by a Grignard reagent, but this could also be a lithium over here as well, which is just as good as a nuclear file. And what we've seen so far, certainly in first year and in second year um, already, as we've seen these adding as nucleophiles to carbonyl compounds, is we've been able to see that uh, the organometallic reagents react very nicely with aldehydes and also with ketones. So this would typify the two types of electrophiles that organometallic uh, reagent would work with. So at this point over here, you should already know how to do the mechanism of this, the addition from the sigma bond onto the carbon, breaking the pi bond is going into the antibonding orbital, et cetera, et cetera. And so th those two are, um, there are so many different examples of that, and we can go on uh, quite a lot. But <clears throat> um, what I want to do now is just expand um, very, very slightly on the two different types of electrophiles that we could use. Um, and the one example that we're going to, the first example I want to look at is uh, CO2. This is a very, very useful electrophile, um, certainly one that we've used in our research uh, um, to make functionalized molecules, uh, is that when we take our, and I'm going to use the organolithium now just as a variation, we can, if we treat an organometallic reagent such as this one or just an organyard reagent, uh, if we treat it with CO2, uh, the carbon dioxide is a good electrophile because it's actually almost like a dicarbonyl. And what happens is the nucleophile adds to the carbon. We can break one of those pi bonds like that. And the result is a carboxylate, which is this. All right, O minus. This is an incredibly useful um, reaction because what we've effectively done, remember this organometallic reagent would have come from, for instance, a chlorine or bromine being there. Um, and so what we've done is we've, we've added a new carbon bond uh, in an in quite a high oxidation level, carboxylic acid, which we can then functionalize. We could reduce this, we could make it into an ester or an amide. These are reactions we'll see later on uh, in the course, but this is an incredibly useful uh, tool. Practically speaking, CO2 is a gas, so all we need to do is bubble the gas through the reaction, or in fact, a much more fun way of doing it is just getting dry ice, so, uh, which is solid CO2, and just dropping it into the reaction, and it works really, really well. So that's the one electrophile I want to look at. And the other one, which is uh, has a little bit of a trick to it, uh, which would be very useful, is the most simple aldehyde, which is formaldehyde. Because if you think about this, and I know I'm being boring just using the benzene ring the whole time, uh, but if we treat uh, our organometallic reagent with formaldehyde, <clears throat> uh, we can immediately see, I mean, the type of mechanism that's going to happen is, again, same thing. We're going to add to that carbon. We're going to break that bond over there. And the product that we get is now the alcohol, or initially the alkoxide, uh, but after protonation, uh, we'll get, uh, at the end of the reaction, we'll get that. So this is very useful because it's kind of similar to um, the carboxylic acid, but we now end up with, it's effectively <clears throat> at making a primary alcohol at the end of a, of a chain. So that's quite useful. Um, but I said there's a little bit of a trick to it. Uh, the problem is, is formaldehyde is also a gas, like CO2. Uh, but unlike CO2, we don't uh, have it readily available in bottles, uh, uh, a gas bottle, that we can do that. Uh, formaldehyde actually, as formaldehyde, is obtained as an aqueous solution. Um, and if you know your organometallic chemistry, you already know that that is going to be a big problem. Um, if you add this... In an aqueous solution, it means we've got water around. This is far too strong a base with a pK of around 40. It, it's not going to allow it to react with the aldehyde. All that's going to happen is it's just going to pick up a proton from water and we'd end up just with plain benzene. So that is a problem. So the solution to this is actually quite simple. It's uh, formaldehyde itself, in fact, uh, very slowly polymerizes into paraformaldehyde. Um, and that's the only difference. So formaldehyde could have been written as... Uh, CH2O, um, that's the chemical formula for it, and paraformaldehyde is just the, we just put an N there because we don't know how long it is, but it's, it's this long sort of chains, they've all combined together. But essentially they are in equilibrium and they're able to react in exactly the same, the same way. So this is known as paraformaldehyde. 
So that's really just all I wanted to expand on. There is actually more coming. Um, and so later on in your lectures, you're going to uh, learn about some other electrophiles that we can use and expanding on this aldehyde and uh, ketone, where we can look at it also reacting at, at esters um, and acid chloride, so other versions of these. So for now, this is just the first uh, step in organometallic reagents.